You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 98. Hey guys, it is time for a brand new episode of the podcast. Welcome back. Before we jump into this incredible interview, I have a few announcements. First off, I want to just thank every single supporter of this ministry. I appreciate all the shop orders, the podcast shares on social media, and the kind words overall. It seriously blesses me so much and it gives me the fuel to keep going. I also want you to stay tuned because this week I'm going to be sharing a secret that is coming to the shop that I think you guys are going to be excited about. I can't share anymore. I want to, but on Tuesday on Instagram, Hello Awesome Live, I'll be sharing the secret. So make sure you stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Second, I wanted to just share something very, very important and ask for a special prayer request. One of my best friends, Lisa, she's my childhood friend, is recovering from surgery. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer late last year, and she had her first surgery around that time to remove a tumor from her stomach. It was so big that it had attached itself to the rest of her organs. And last week, she had another surgery to correct the damage that the tumor did on her muscles. I want to ask for you to keep Lisa in your prayers, please, as it could be up to a year before her body fully heals from this. I have set up a GoFundMe to help Lisa with any medical bills she has to pay for out of pocket. She is a hardworking mother to a beautiful, sweet, autistic son, and I know that the financial burden can be heavy as she is unable to work right now on bed rest. So I'm going to add the link to the show notes so that you can check it out there and donate whatever amount you feel called to donate. You can also type it into your browser, and I'm going to give you the link right now. Type gf.me forward slash U, the letter U, forward slash Z, P, B, 2, M, C. And it should bring you to the page. Now, every little bit helps, and I am just so incredibly thankful for everybody who has donated already. And I'm going to just thank you in advance for helping bless my best friend. I wish I could do more for her, but she's in California and I'm in Connecticut. So I felt compelled to set up this uh, GoFundMe for Lisa. She didn't ask me to do it. I just felt like it was the way to use my platform to bless her during this time. I'm believing in her full healing and God's touch on her life. And so I ask that you just join me in believing that as well. Today's episode, I have Sheridan Heyman talking about being brave. How timely. It is an amazing discussion. Sheridan has sung with many great artists like James Wilson. She serves in her local church and is an overall incredible human. I know her words are going to impact you. We talk about how we should appreciate the local church, trusting God in our current season, singleness, being newly married, and the true meaning of bravery. Let's get into this awesome chat. Here we go, guys. This is episode number 98 that I am calling Being Brave with Sheridan Heyman. Hey, guys, I'm JC. Are you ready for real conversations about faith, business, and life? Me too. This is the Hello Awesome podcast where I bring forth topics and truthful insights that will encourage you to make intentional choices and pursue God with your whole heart. Are you ready to say hello to the awesome blessings that God has for you? All right, let's do this. The Hello Awesome podcast is sponsored by some good friends who want to give you a special treat just for showing up. If you're looking for super cute, modest clothing that is both classy and fun, Nuggles has you covered. Use code HelloAwesome10 for 10% off at www.nuggles.us. That's www.nuggles.us and stock up on essential yet affordable apparel right now. 
If this windy weather is leaving your skin crying out for help like mine, Oneness Essentials has what you need to be nourished again. Their handmade lotions and soap bars are seriously heavenly and smell amazing. Use code HelloAwesome at onenesssoapbiz.com for 15% off your next order of bath and body products today. That's O-N-E-N-E-S-S-S-O-A-P-B-I-Z dot com. Are you in love with a good scrunchie? If you know me, then you know my answer is, duh. And my favorite ones are from So Vita. These are high quality, handcrafted scrunchies straight out of indie. Seriously, they're perfect for long hair. Use code PODCAST for 10% off to pick up a handful of scrunchies like the popular Crushed Velvet or Satin Bow at sovita.com. That's S-E-W-V-I-D-A dot com. Go grab a bunch to add to your collection or give away as the perfect gift. I want to give a big shout out to those of you who are working in the medical field, especially our nurses and technicians. Bravo to you guys. Y'all are the real MVPs. If you need comfortable scrub skirts so that you can serve others while sticking to your modest lifestyle, Sea Saucy is the place for you. Use code HELLO10 for 10% off your entire order right now when you check out at seasaucy.com. That's C-S-A-U-C-Y dot com. Go invest in a comfortable scrub skirt right now with Sea Saucy so that you can just focus on your patience and continue on being a light. Okay, who says athletic wear is boring? Not with Snaga Athletics. With so many fun colors and designs to choose from, you no longer have to struggle to stay modest when you are ready to be active. Use code JC10 for 10% off your minimum purchase of $20 and get free shipping on orders of $120 or more. This code doesn't apply to the Courtney T. Oliver collection, and it's valid through April 30th at midnight. That code is JACY10 for 10% off your minimum purchase of $20 right now at snogaathletics.com. That's S-N-O-G-A-A-T-H-L-E-T-I-C-S dot com. Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited that you are back here with me today because I have a very special guest. Sheridan, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the podcast, for taking time out of your day, even after recovering from COVID. I am so thankful that the Lord is healing you and your husband. Um, I want you to please take a minute to share with us who you are and what you do. I am so honored to be on your podcast. So thank you so much for having me. I was so excited to get to chat. Um, I am uh, 23. I My name is Sheridan Heyman, formerly Sheridan Burkett. I moved to Colorado from Texas about a year and a half ago. Um, so I'm a Southern girl living in a very cold state. Um, I'm a dental hygienist and I absolutely love it. My husband and I attend Calvary Apostolic Church here in Denver, um, and he is the administrative pastor, and we're the um, young adult pastors here, but we're kind of like hands in everything. Um, wherever we're needed, we're there, um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much me. I live with my husband and the most amazing 130-pound American bulldog, um, so that is my life. <laughs> That's so fun. And wow, what a, I mean, what a shock it must have been to kind of move to a different state like that. Absolutely. Especially, um, I think the hardest thing is just the driving in the snow and ice, Mm -hmm. because I mean, we never get snow in Texas. So it's been kind of like learning to drive all over again. Even just yesterday, I was freaking out about getting out because we just have like a downpour of snow and ice. Um, And of course, like they have great trucks here that plow everything. So it's not that it's not terrible. I just like make it worse in my mind than it is. Um, But that's I think that's been like the biggest transition for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I live in Connecticut. So the northeast. Uh, So we are used to weather like that. And it doesn't matter growing up in it. It's still awful to drive in it. It's not fun at all. 
Yes, it will definitely keep your prayer life like strong because you're praying the whole time you're driving. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, uh, obviously, I've been following you on Instagram for, I don't know, probably a few years now. And I think we've connected here or there. And, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on is because, you know, I've watched you worship and, you know, you've performed, um, you know, on live streams and you've performed for just, um, you know, many of the amazing worship songs and with some incredible leaders that we have in the movement and you're just really inspiring. And I just was so fascinated by your love of worship. And, you know, I could just tell by the way that you sing that you just love the Lord. And I really wanted to have you talk about, you know, how important it is to just stay connected to the church and and to worship, especially after such a crazy 2020. Yes. Um, well, it's it's definitely been um, an honor to get to sing and to get to worship with some really amazing people and um, to get to share in those worship experiences. So I am just honored to have been able to be, to be a part. Um, I think that, you know, especially with how insane 2020 has been for so many people. I don't think it's been an easy year for anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, what the thing that I love about worship and, and its importance is that, so I, I love praise because praise is glorifying God and, you know, giving him the, the praise that he is worthy of. Um, right. But worship to me is it takes my eyes off of my problems and worship is, you know, I'm decreasing so that he can increase. It's almost like this comparison of how small I am um, whenever I'm up next to this amazing God who is in control of everything. And my favorite thing about worship is that it, it gives you this ability to see that as much as you may think that, you know, things may be crazy when you get lost in worship, it's like, man, but God is so big. Like, yeah. yes, I'm small. And yes, this is out of my control, but God, he's got this. And no matter what it may look like, no matter what it may feel like, he's not going to let me go in the midst of all of this. And so I think that that true worship is something that a lot of people, I pray that they have been able to find through the hardships of 2020, Um, because it can be really easy to sing like a pretty song and to have fun with it and to enjoy it. But there's something so different about tapping into true worship and tapping Mm -hmm. into this moment where it's, it's not about me. It's all about you. It's you, God. It's all about, you know, how amazing you are. And I am nothing compared to how wonderful you are. And I think that 2020 has been a really great opportunity for that. So I, I'm prayerful that through it, you know, a lot of people have been able to grow in, into true worship. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's so beautiful. I love your response because I think it's so, so true when you get lost in worship, all of the words just point back to him, just how good he is, his identity, who he is. And, um, you know, I've always said this, when we learn who God is, we learn who we are. And in worship, though, it's like, we don't even care about who we are, (laughs) because we are so focused on who he is. And it's just so overwhelming. We are in awe of that. And um, I think 2020 really has, I know for our family, really just elevated our worship life because we were able to tap into everybody else's service that normally Mm -hmm. wouldn't have been streaming and our church is very small we have um mostly elderly in our church um and our building is kind of in repair right now and so we actually haven't been together since march and that's been really really hard and you know, one of the things that has helped us connect besides our church Zoom services has been just watching the worship of other churches and even just the streaming that has gone on. You know, a lot of apostolic artists, you know, put music out there. And um, it was just such a blessing. And the timing, you know, um, one of the CDs that has really blessed us has been IBC's Victory. You know, just all the songs on there were just so powerful. And That kind of brings me to my next question. I would love to know what has been one song that has been like replaying in your mind lately that has just kept you in touch with the presence of God. Um, 
so my answer to this is kind of different, I guess, because um, so my husband and I are actually working on releasing some original stuff right now. So we've been working on writing and, and in that I find that whenever we're writing a, whenever we're writing a song that I'm kind of, I guess, overwhelmed with the feeling of the moment of that mm -hmm. song. And so I just kind of, I find myself walking around singing those songs that I feel like Christ put in my spirit that like, okay, this is what's getting me through this right now. And it's not something that is a mainstream song or that has even been put out yet. Um, but I know that God put it in my spirit for a reason and, and hopefully we can get it out there. Um, but as far as mainstream songs that other people would be able to listen to, um, I love listening to apostolic music that comes out. Um, I love fun music, especially because it's kind of hard to find the happiness sometimes in such yeah. a stressful season. So I really love listening to um, Kristen Hicks. She's got some really great stuff. Landry yeah. Cantrell has some good stuff. All just super fun. Um, not necessarily like like I'm having church in my bedroom all the time, but sure. just like listening to it and, and it lifts my spirit up. Um, so those are more like mainstream songs that I've been listening to. Yeah. And I do think that is a good point is it's okay to have songs that bring you joy. It doesn't have to be a lot of lamenting or repentance all the time, even though those are very important things, but the joy of the Lord is also important, you know, rejoicing and having fun. And, yes. and I think that is something that definitely could have been lost this past year. You know, I'm sure a lot of people have struggled to find that joy. Um, but you know, I was just, uh, kind of doing a little writing earlier. And I, I was reminded that joy is really a choice. So, you know, we can choose the the joyful songs to kind of help us and God will, will come through for us and, and bring us that joy that we need, even if it's just for that moment. Yes, absolutely. I think of like, um, it talks about making a joyful noise to the Lord. And I love songs that, that take me to an emotional place, but man, I love songs that just give me joy, that just help me choose joy for that day. I love, I love the way you said that we choose joy. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are definitely songs that help us to choose joy. So that's kind of, I've been sticking to those songs during this season because it's really easy for me to get into my emotions. I don't need I don't need lamenting songs to get into my emotions. I can get into them so easy. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that too. I'm right there with you. It's so easy. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think that's what's the beautiful thing about, you know, having these different artists because um, they're all so unique and that's the way God made us. He made us each original and unique and not every song is going to be the same and not every style is going to be the same. But as long as it glorifies the Lord and as long as it's positive and it's uplifting your spirit, then that's that's totally OK. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I wanted to know, you know, do you feel like after having such a rough year uh, between the isolation and then, of course, all these remote services, especially at the beginning of 2020, do you think that there have been like more of an appreciation for the local church? I Absolutely do. I think that um, church has been kind of put into perspective a little bit more than what it was before. I think it's easy to take the community and um, the church for granted whenever you don't really know what it's like to live without it. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of makes me think of growing up, I always heard stories of churches in communist countries where they weren't allowed to have church, but it was almost like because it wasn't something that was just easily handed to them, they appreciated it so much more. Mm -hmm. And so when they came together for church, it was let's get into the presence of God because, you know, we're not just here because it's something fun to do on a Sunday. We could be arrested for this. Um, and so I, I kind of feel like we've gone through a similar situation in churches here in um, the very free America, where it's kind of been something that I think we have taken for granted a lot. Um, but they, I just read an article actually that was released thousands and thousands of people across the U.S. And it found that of every single group that they polled, that all of them had experienced um, decreases in their emotional and mental health, that they reported that they were having mm -hmm. a much harder time emotionally, except for one group. And that group was 
was the group of people who were able to attend church on a regular basis and people who were plugged into a church, whether that was online or in person, but those who stayed connected to the church. And rather than being able to go into a church building, they brought the church into their home, which is a super important lesson for Mm -hmm. all of us to learn. Um, Mm -hmm. But finding that they reported that their emotional and and mental well-being was actually stronger than it was at the beginning of COVID. And so the the fact that that was a government study, that wasn't a study done by churches. Mm-hmm. The fact that people who have been connected to Christ through all of this and connected to their church through all of this are some of the only ones who have really been able to experience that encouragement and uplifting from that. I think a lot of people, and I pray a lot of people will find further value in their church than maybe just something to do on a Sunday or maybe just a place to go to wear a cute outfit or maybe a place to go um, to hang out with people. So I think that COVID has been a blessing in that way that it's put church into perspective for us. Oh yeah, absolutely. And from experience, you know, since we haven't been meeting, um, obviously I love our local church. And so there's that burden again of like, Lord, I just want the doors to open again and for all this to go away so we can win souls again, you know, like so we can yeah. actually <laughs> impact our community and impact our town again. But, um, you know, it really has focused my attention on my personal devotion. And I'm so lucky and, and honored that the Lord and I have that relationship when we had that established before uh, COVID hit and before, you know, we we couldn't meet, but there were some people that, probably didn't have that. And so I hope and pray that they, you know, uh, just dove deeper into devotion with the Lord, into connecting with the Lord on a personal level. And that, you know, hopefully, um, when, you know, we do um, have more of the quote, unquote, normalcy, come back, and we're back in our local churches, all of us, you know, doing life again, hopefully, we can have that adoration and appreciation for the local church. Absolutely. And I think another thing is, is that I love that technology has given us this ability for the church to come into our homes yes. and for us to be able to have services, you know, online or streamed or, or meet with people on Zoom or have Bible studies on Zoom. I think it is amazing that technology has been there with that. Um, but it also, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword in a way because Christians as as the body of Christ, we are not intended to be consumers. We are intended to be givers and to Mm -hmm. give of ourselves. And so I, I think that us not really being able to come into a church house and give of the talents and the giftings that Christ has given us, or to give a word of encouragement to someone, or to just to be the church in the way that, that we're intended to not just sit on a couch and receive, you know, Um, I think that coming out of this, and I pray that coming out of this, a lot of people will feel even more of a burden to no longer just be consumer Christians, but to get plugged in, to get involved. What can you do in your local church to expand the vision of the church and to expand the vision of the pastor um, and to grow and get your church out to the local community to share the love of Jesus beyond the four walls? So that's one way that I think that being connected mm-hmm. to a local church now is so important because whenever we do come back, um, I feel like Christ is going to ask us to step up to the plate and be you know, even more connected to the vision of taking the message out beyond the four walls than ever before. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree with that. I think it's so, so important to remember that and, you know, to keep in touch with our, you know, with our brothers and sisters, if we can right now, sending them text messages or giving them a phone call and just letting them know that they're being thought of. I think, you know, we can try and be hopefully somewhat of of a giver that way, sending food to somebody's house or a gift card, or especially to those who are, you know, are, who are pastors and pastor's wife or those on the staff who are having a hard time. And yeah, I think, you know, we have to find innovative ways right now to give, but I, I so, I so, you know, have that burden as well of, of, I really hope that when we do come together, 
you know, we are ready to be givers and not just consumers. And we're just, we're just going to be on fire more than ever before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and just like you said, there are incredible ways that, you know, you can get involved to be a giver right now. I know for our church personally, um, we have a higher percentage of single moms within a five mile radius of our church Mm. than the average in America. Um, And so through this time, this has been a really hard time for the single moms in our community because many of them, um, their kids are not able to attend school. So they're home um, and and these moms have sometimes lost their job uh, or they're working two jobs to now try to pay for childcare since their child isn't able to attend school during the day, but they Mm -hmm. still have to work. Um, And so this has been, while it has been a setback because we're not able to be the light to our community in a lot of the ways that we would want to because of COVID restrictions, it's also been a really great opportunity because a lot of churches within our area have kind of shied away from doing any sort of um, community outreach projects or from serving the community. So this is a really great time, Mm -hmm. I think, a great opportunity for apostolic churches to really shine the light of Jesus and to show that, you know, we're not running on autopilot, that we're taking full advantage of the fact that there are so many right now who are hungry for hope and we have that hope for you. So while this is definitely, like you said, the way that we are givers looks totally different. I think it's almost more important now than ever before that we are those givers because so many people are, are hindered in their ability to give right now. So it is the perfect opportunity for us to shine as the body of Christ. Yes, that's so good. Um, Thank you for sharing that. I think, yeah, just looking at things a different way and just being the hands and feet of Jesus is just so important, um, no matter what. And, you know, I really want to just take some time and just kind of shift a little bit um, and speak about bravery. I don't know why this word came to my mind when I was prepping these questions for you. And I was just thinking about, you know, stepping out and doing something with full confidence in God, you know, even if we don't feel ready um, for what's to come, and maybe it's because of what we went through last year, but has there ever been a point in time where you knew you had to be brave and trust God? Absolutely. Um, I think more so in this past year and a half than ever in my life. Um, I grew up in, I'm from Texas, but I grew up in the exact same town my entire life. Um, my, my family started the church whenever I was three. So I grew up in this incredible church, the most wonderful church family, um, so supportive. And it was just a very safe haven. It was almost like Mm -hmm. I was given this extreme grace from everyone in the church to find my path and to find my way. It was just a beautiful very kind of like being in a nursery experience Um, because whenever I would fall or mess up, it was never, and I I know that unfortunately some people who are raised in a minister's home or a pastor's home feel this pressure of when they fall or mess up that people point the finger and they're like, oh, you're the pastor's kid. You shouldn't mess up. But for me, it was always, you know, we're just going to pick you up and we're going to love you and, and it's totally fine. You're finding your way. And so I had a really great experience with that in my in my church home and, and moving to a brand new place, um, moving from the job that I loved, um, the community of people in my work family who, you know, we, we prayed at lunchtime and they would come to my church services. And it was just a really wonderful environment and leaving friends that I had known my entire life who were more like family than friends. And then moving away from a family that I had never even lived like on campus at college. I just had lived with my family my whole life. Um, So moving away, that was definitely a point of bravery for me Um, in the sense that moving here, I have been so blessed to be welcomed into a wonderful, wonderful church family, um, a wonderful church home. But there's always this feeling of when you're the new person, there's always this feeling of, oh, I need to prove my worth or I need to prove myself mm-hmm. that, you know, I have value or I'm, I'm here and I'm going to add value to this congregation and, or that, Hey, I'm the person that you want to be friends with. And I think that bravery took on a new face whenever everything that I thought made me, me was stripped away in a wow. sense. Yeah. Um, 
I had found so much of my value in the people that I was surrounded by, in the support group that I was surrounded by, in the job that I had and the money I was making. Um, and I think bravery is, it's, it's not really bravery unless there's some fear involved to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for the first few months of being here, it was a constant second guessing myself of, you know, am I, oh my word, in that conversation, did I give that person the wrong impression? Or, oh my word, am I representing myself well here? Or did I just do something that's going to paint myself in a bad light? And of course, no one ever was was criticizing me the way that I was. Um, but in that bravery, I found that I had to to find my value in something that was more rooted and grounded than just the place I was at or the job that I had or the talents that I was able to use. And it really pushed me to this place of finding my value in Christ. And I think that that's really where all bravery can come from is from knowing that, that it's not about your, my self esteem or my self value, but it's about my God value. Like Christ created me for a purpose and exactly the way that I am is how he made me. And so I think when that really gets into your spirit, it's like you can handle anything. Mm -hmm. And that bravery just comes naturally. Not to say that there's not fear involved, (laughs) um, but knowing that your value comes from something so much more than just your abilities or or even your friends or or your Mm -hmm. popularity, things like that. Um, Oh, yeah. So that was kind of my take with with bravery or my experience with bravery over this last little bit. I think I thought before moving that I had a really good foundation of my value in Christ. Um, So it, it was kind of a shock to move and have everything stripped away and realize oh, wait, I really need to get even more of Mm -hmm. my value from Christ because I've been leaning a lot on my own self. So, Yeah, those are all such good points. And just thank you, first of all, for sharing that story with us. You know, I think anytime someone shares their experience and shares a story, it's just so relatable. Um, Even if we've never went through it, we all have those same feelings of being in a new place. And just not feeling like yourself or everything is not comfortable anymore. Everything is uncomfortable. And I do agree. I love what you said about, you know, bravery, having some fear involved. Um, I think, you know, God, yes, he wants us to be fearless, but that it's all filtered through him. And, you know, being brave definitely is just, you know, just going through those situations, remembering who you are in him and looking to him, like you said, uh, as, as basically, you know, the wise one who can show us how much value we have and who we really are. (laughs) And, um, so when you do think of that word brave, because we've been talking about it already for a little bit. And when we throw it around, what definition comes to your mind when you hear that, that word brave? I think what comes to my mind whenever I hear the word brave is just trust, just the word trust, Um, trusting in a plan that's greater than your own, trusting in in God that he's going to carry you. Um, I think that in itself is bravery, or at least in my experiences, I know bravery may look different for other people. But I like to be in control of everything. Um, I'm a sure. perfectionist. And so when I hear bravery, to me, it's just trusting and letting go of, of having to be in control of it all. That if the situation is scary and you don't understand it, trust is the answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. And honestly, this works out perfectly because I, I do want to talk about, you know, you being... Um, you know, married and, and I want to talk about love and there is a lot of trust that has to go in there. Oh, yes. (laughs) There's a lot of being brave when you get married. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. Um, So, well, first of all, congratulations. I know this is probably way overdue. Um, but congratulations on being married. That's just so awesome. And oh my gosh, beautiful milestone in your life. 
thank you. Thank you. I am um, loving married life. I think it is better than I even imagined that it would be for sure. Mm -hmm. So I am, I am loving it. (laughs) Yeah, it is definitely fun, especially when your husband is your best friend. Um, Oh, yes. (laughs) That's, there's nothing like it, especially when, um, you know, it's one, one thing I've always told people, especially, you know, the single ladies out there, they'll ask me questions. We've been married 11 years going on 12, um, which is crazy to even say those words, but uh, you know, we were friends first, we communicated mm-hmm. first. And that's such a powerful, powerful thing just to be able to talk <laughs> and open yeah. up whether you agree or not. And, um, you know, I read something you had posted, I think this was probably like right after you got married, you posted uh, something along the lines of like encouraging single ladies to just wait. And mm-hmm. it was so beautiful what you wrote and it was so just insightful and um you know what what is one thing that you learned throughout this entire journey from singleness to being a newlywed bride I think the main thing that I've learned through this journey is to embrace my season that I can think back to my time whenever I was single and And I was so blessed that my husband was the only man I've ever fallen in love with. And I remember thinking, just thinking back to that, I I remember being in those moments and I had friends who were dating guys and who um, had these connections, even my sister. So I have a younger sister. She is three years younger than me. And she started dating. She just got married, actually. She started dating her husband, her now husband, um, whenever she was 14. Um, wow. and they weren't necessarily dating because she wasn't quote unquote allowed to date at that time. Um, <laughs> but they were exclusive. They were talking very sure. exclusively. Yeah. And so she was in love at the age of um, probably around 15. She realized this is the guy I'm going to marry. And so they dated for five years and, um, I had never fallen in love with anyone. And so it was very easy to wonder, is there something wrong with me? Like Mm -hmm. my little sister who's younger than me has found her soulmate. She's in love. And I can't even find a guy that I'm interested in for longer than two weeks. (laughs) And um, I remember being in that season. And unfortunately, I fought my season a lot. I wanted really badly to be out of that season so much so that I think I missed some of the opportunities to grow myself as a single person um, that Christ was putting before me, these opportunities for me to just grow just as myself. And um, so my, my biggest thing would be don't fight your season because I mean, she dated her boyfriend for five years and I dated my husband for five months and then we were engaged. And it was the type of thing where we met and literally on our first date, I knew I was going to marry him. And I had never said that before. I felt like I was crazy because mm-hmm. I was always the girl that was never really that interested in anyone. Um, but I do feel like if I would have known the path that God had for me and that my person was out there and that, yes, my timing wasn't going to look like everybody else's, but I, in my season, had to grow on my own before it was time for that next step to yeah. be taken. I think I would have had a lot more going back to the word trust. I would have had a lot more trust in the mm-hmm. process and I would have done a lot less comparing myself. I think that's one of the big things that I've learned through this is whether it is, you know, through your job, through your ministry, through your relationship status that comparing your journey or your season to anyone else's is just ultimately going to rob you of the lesson that Christ is trying to teach you through the season that you are in. Yeah. I, I really, you know, appreciate that. I, you know, thank you for, for sharing. Honestly, thank you for sharing that because there are people out there who have gone through that season and who have now found their person. And there are some who haven't and they're waiting. 
And I think it's important to talk to those people and let them know that there is hope, you know, to not give up, but to, you know, basically bloom where you're planted. Right. And I love what you said about fighting your season. I wrote it down and like circled it. That kind of hit me real hard because girl that can preach. Okay. I am just, you said that and I was like, whew, the Holy ghost is here right now. Um, but it's so true. No matter no matter what season we're in, you know, when we fight our that season, we're really not trusting God. We're mm-hmm. we're saying, you know, God, I I deserve more than what you gave me already. Yeah. And and I think, you know, we have to be careful whether we mean that or not. That's really what it what is telling God when we are um, when we're not having that thankfulness that attitude of gratitude, the Bible, you know, tells us to be content when we're not content. Mm-hmm. And it's not saying that just because you're content doesn't mean you don't have dreams or goals doesn't mean that you don't want certain things. It just means that wherever you are, you should be just grateful for it. And so I would love it if you would just take a couple minutes right now, or however long you want. I mean, girl, just talk because I think you are really onto something here. Uh, what would you say to someone who is just frustrated with the waiting? Maybe they are fighting this season and just feeling so discouraged that love hasn't manifested for them yet in their lives. I would say to absolutely embrace your season, of course, like I mentioned before, and become the person that you would want to marry. Like use this time, the kind of, of love that you're looking for, the kind of of person that you are wanting in your life, what is it they're going to want in someone? And are you that person? Um, But work on building yourself and becoming more like Christ yourself, because coming into a marriage with someone else, um, if you are struggling to show the attributes of Christ, I think of of marriage as it is a kind of glory because it is a symbolic of, you know, Christ and his relationship with the church. Um, And so if, if you come into a marriage and you yourself don't know how to act like Christ, it's going to be very hard to have a healthy marriage right off the bat. Um, But also know that, that I think a lot of times, unfortunately, and I think a lot of it is people who don't intend for their comments to come across a certain way, or they don't intend necessarily to make someone feel like their value is tied up in marriage or a relationship. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it happens more often than we realize that people will make comments or, or say, what's wrong with you that you're not, you know, dating anyone, or you go to a, to a family Christmas or family Thanksgiving, and everyone just wants to know, are you dating anyone? Or you meet with your girlfriends. And the first question is, are you talking to someone? Yeah. And that can begin to put this idea in our minds that our value is tied to our relationship status, or that, that in order for us to be moving forward, that we have to be in a relationship. Um, and I would say fight those feelings with everything inside of you because you are so much more than who you're dating or who you're talking to or your relationship status that believe it or not, marriage is not the end goal in life. (laughs) It is not, um, that marriage is not what saves us, you know, but, but use this time to grow closer to Christ, to build relationships with, with strong female friends and strong mentors because you're going to need those whenever you get married you're going to need those people to fall back on whenever you do get married and and you enter into a brand new season because those changes that are going to come with your brand new season are really going to require you to have a strong support system um so i think my biggest encouragement would be to to trust that Christ has your story all written out and to know that no matter what, unfortunately, human ideology may say or what, what society may make you think that your value is so much more than your relationship status or who you are tied to and know that Christ is going to bring you the person 
that he has for you whenever the timing is right. I remember a long time ago, I heard a preacher say that until you do not need marriage to be happy, you're not ready for marriage. Hmm. And that really resonated with me in the season that I was in, because I was in that, that season of singleness. And I would just say, find happiness outside of that. And then whenever you do find your person and Christ opens that opportunity and connects you to the one that you were to be with, um, it's not at all on them to make you happy, but instead it's this healthy, balanced relationship that you are already fulfilled in Christ. And so you're able to be a team to work together rather than one person having to feel like they've got to make the other one happy all the time. Um, that would be, I know I threw in a ton of things in that one little thing. Um, those would be my biggest tips. I know there were a lot of them in there, but that's yeah, pretty but much all I have so to say good. about that. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. <laughs> Keep going. No, I mean, there's so, yeah, there's a lot there, but it was all so well said. And, you know, I appreciate you sharing your heart because it's so, so important for, I think, you know, young ladies out there to hear these words, especially from those of us who are on the other side, you know, of marriage. And, um, you know, I was just thinking when you were talking how, you know, really waiting in the season that you've been given is brave. You know, we were just talking about bravery, you know, just, Mm -hmm. just having that trust that God's going to take care of you. Um, and having that fear of the unknown, but just sticking to it and trying to be positive and doing what God has called you to do in the moment, in the season that you're in, that is brave. And I feel like those who are single might not feel like they even have a purpose, but you know, our two biggest commandments were to love God and love others. And Mm -hmm. so, um, like you said, marriage is not supposed to be our savior. (laughs) Yes. It's It's a pin in the map, you know, on the journey. Um, and, uh, if we are fortunate and blessed to have that as part of our stories, then yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, but until that happens, God has an assignment for each and every one of us. God has an assignment for the single lady out there. There is something that he has, he, he has, he wants you to do right now. And like you said, Mm -hmm. some of that could just be working on yourself. It could just be, you know, getting closer to the Lord as simple as it sounds. Sometimes that's actually not very simple at all. (laughs) This is true. This is so true. I always like, I have to be careful whenever I pray. I'm like, God, draw me closer to you because inevitably he's going to send some sort of hardship that's going to draw me closer to him. So yes, it's not as easy as it sounds. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Well, Sheridan, you are truly just such a beautiful person inside and out. You are so incredibly talented and I'm just so grateful that you took time to speak with us today. And I would love it if you would just share with everybody where they could find you on social media and where they can connect to your church. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Thank you so much for talking. You are so easy to talk to. It's been so fun. So awesome. I might Um, need a note from you to my husband then. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> just kidding absolutely just kidding. <laughs> absolutely I will hand make a card with glitter and everything yes um, oh he's gonna love that <laughs> <laughs> uh, so my Instagram um it's kind of the main social media platform that I use I do have Facebook as well um but on Instagram I'm just Sheridan in Heyman um and then connecting to my amazing church here in Colorado um on Facebook they're just Calvary Church of Denver or cacdenver.org if you want to look us up online. Um, We do stream our services and have noonday prayers for anyone who would like to hop in and get an extra bit of encouragement throughout your week, especially during this super crazy time. Oh, definitely. I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, Thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was just such a joy to talk to you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Um, So to everyone out there who has listened for this long, Thank you for not being tired of my voice yet, for hanging with us, um, for tuning in. And I pray that you all have an amazing, blessed week and walk in faith and in trust that Christ has a plan that is perfectly laid out for you. 
Were you inspired by this episode? I hope so. If you were, please take a screenshot of your podcast player and share it on Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Live. That's H E L L O A W E S O M E L I V E. It really encourages me to see that you were blessed. Also, do you want a free digital devotional? Leave a five star review in iTunes and DM me a screenshot of the review with your email address. You'll be gifted a digital devotional of your choice as a thank you. To learn more about Hello Awesome, head to helloawesome.live. That's H E L L O A W E S O M E dot L I V E. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.